Okay, well, it's DX contest season again, and we'll talk about this a little bit. See if I can push the right button. Well, DX means distance. You know, that stuff that gives me nightmares, DX, DT, and all that engineering stuff. Uh, and to, a, to hams, DX means foreign stations across the pond somewhere. But we'll just settle for distance. You hear, you, you hear uh, Denver, 1,600 miles out, that's DX, that's good DX by what we're doing. Uh, propagation on the broadcast band, well, in the daytime, you're lucky if you get 100 miles out of it, that's, that's ground wave. But at night, you get signals bouncing off the ionosphere and you can get quite a bit greater distance. Uh, this varies with the time of day, season of the year, we're in midwinter, this is a good time. And there's also an 11 year sunspot cycle that has some effects on all of this. So a lot of variables, but uh, uh, that's what makes it happen. Uh, when, when you turn on an AM radio, there's kind of layers of stuff you hear at night. I mean, day, day or night, you hear the strong locals, WOR, WABC, or whatever. And then sun goes down, and you start hearing the big regional stations within four or 500 miles. And you, you know these, WBZ, KBW in Buffalo, and Wheeling, West Virginia. Uh, one of the strong ones in this area is 900 CHML in, in uh, Hamilton. You can generally hear that on a crystal set without a lot of trouble. And, uh, and then further out, out to about 700 miles, you get the Chicago stations, Nashville, uh, Atlanta. And farther still, you know, you can get out into Texas, New Orleans, and even down into, the, into Central America, South America a little bit when conditions are, are really good and when you're set up properly to do it. Uh, just a comment on the band plan. The AM broadcast band these days is 540 to 1700. Uh, 10 kilohertz spacing here in region two. You know, the Europeans do it nine kilohertz. Uh, for contest purposes, we do 540 to 1600 only because the classic radios don't tune the, uh, the new band. You hear people talk about clear channel stations. And there are defined clear channels on these frequencies, and I'll talk about that a little bit on the next couple of slides. Uh, generally, these are 50 kilowatts, 50 kilowatt stations in the clear channel, and there's regional channels, uh, five, 10 kilowatts. And then there's locals. There's this area called the graveyard where there's just dozens of stations, and, and if you're really you know, really into it, you can sit there on a frequency at night and hear one fade in and another one fade out. But uh, I don't get too excited about that. Okay, when you're doing the DX contest, uh, it, it's sort of a, a uh, it, it's on you to honestly identify the station. You ought to either hear an ID out of them or, you know, hear an ad for a local business in Chicago or something, you know what you're listening to. And the reason you need to do this is you can't just go by the frequency because KOA in Denver, for instance, supposed clear channel frequency, and I just did a, uh, a, a scan of the FCC records with a radius of 300 miles around Freehold, and you have all of these stations which are also on 8, 850 at night, including WEEI up in Boston, 50 kilowatts. Okay, so how does this clear channel thing work? Here's the antenna pattern for WEEI, and if you draw a line back out the back here, that points to Denver. They have to protect Denver because they're a clear channel station. But here where we live, some of that stuff still leaks down here, and you can be sitting listening to 850, picking up WEEI just fine, so you have to wait for an ID, make sure you, you, you really heard the station. 
So, what can I hear? Well, I dug out some of my old logs, and uh, this was a one-tube regen on my 100-foot doublet ham antenna, just connected together as a T antenna. I did have a, a simple wave trap on this that would let you beat back a strong signal just a little bit so you could kind of sneak up beside it. And if you look at this, heard Radio Raylo out of Cuba, of course heard Windsor, Ontario, Louisville, Kentucky, Chicago, uh, Charlotte, New, even New Orleans, 1,100 miles out, Atlanta, Nashville. So on a very simple receiver, that's the kind of thing you can do. Now this, this was out in Flemington. I can't do this in Jersey City because there's a, a 50 kilowatt guy every 50 kilohertz and you just can't hear out from in between them with anything but a super hat. Another example, this would be the uh, the 20s battery set portion of the contest. This was a, a Browning Drake Regeniformer, which was a homebrew from the 20s. Uh, they sold this kit that let you build a, a regen with an RF stage and gave you the, the coils for it. And with this, you know, I, Radio Raylo's easy, Nashville, Chicago, New Orleans, two Cubans, I'll talk about this a little later about how you identify those guys. And back in these days, uh, Turks and Caicos on uh, uh, 530 was, was on the air, they're gone now. But, but again, some really nice DX on a really simple radio. So if you have one of these kind of sets, I suggest you campaign it in the, uh, in the contest because competition is not very fierce in the crystal sets and primitive receivers and 1920s thing, and you can come away with a, a first place prize pretty easily. Uh, here's more sophisticated radio, but this was from up in Jersey City, uh, R390 military set with, uh, with a shielded loop receiver on it. And, you know, the score is a little bit higher. There's some more thousand mile stations, but it's not all that different from what happens with a simpler radio. Uh, we're not sure if Caracas is still on the air, and I'll talk about how you hear Caracas. A uh, couple of Cubans. This was back in the day where you could log as many. Uh, no, this, that was the other log. Uh, we, we made a, a rule a while back, because Radio Raylo appears on so many frequencies, you get a good night and you could sit there and log six of them and you know that's all you'd log. Uh, so you only get one Radio Raylo station to count. Uh, the, the crossed out station here was, uh, was uh, ZIZ down in St. Kitts and Nevis, but they're gone. Anyway, that's the kind of thing you can do. Uh, so where do I start? If you haven't done any DXing, grab a digital radio. You all have one of some sort, even if it's a, even if it's a clock radio or, or something like that. All of, these, all of these modern sets have a, a loop antenna built into them. They have a lot of a lot of gain, a lot of performance, and the digital display lets you know what frequency you're on. So you can go looking for, for a KOA on 850, tune up 850, rotate the radio around, see if you can hear it. So it's a very simple way in, and, and it's what I re recommend if you haven't done any DX. Now, we have an unlimited category in the, in the uh, contest, you can go ahead and submit a log, but you're gonna be fighting guys like Dave Snellman and, and whatnot. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, uh, that's, that's the place to start because you don't have the complications of, is my dial calibrated? Do I have a proper antenna? This, that, and the other thing that's gonna happen when you pull out your 1930s favorite radio. You're gonna have to do some work to get used to that. And if nothing else, you know, get your feet wet, smell around, and then you'll know, you'll know better what to do with the other radio. 
Uh, now, I, I have this website, uh, a subdomain of mine, njarc at ar88.net, and there's a contest page there with a lot of resources on it. There's the rules, there's log sheets, uh, and a couple of frequency lists. Now, uh, regarding the log sheets, if you're familiar with Excel spreadsheets, download it as an Excel and log yourself, and you can make it add up the score automatically and things like that. It's a clean way to do it if you're used to that rather than pencil and paper. It also makes it easier then to just send the file to Tom for judging him. You know, it's a clean deal. Uh, but I did this list, and this goes on down for the whole band. Uh, AMDX station list. Now, I really feel like 90% of the high scoring stations are on this list, maybe 95%. You, if you didn't know of any other stations, you could probably win, win the contest or do well in the contest just from this list. I also included the local New York stations in the list. They're the ones with the asterisk out here, so, which you can use as a reference to calibrate the dial on your receiver. You know, you can sit down in the daytime and figure out how far your dial's off put that difference in the log column here, and then you can go looking for the other stations and fill in the log as you, as you find them. But, uh, uh, and I have them labeled difficulty one, two, and three. You know, the, the three is being a little bit harder to pick up. So I su strongly suggest you use that sheet, you know, as, as something to get you going. Now, uh, a lot of talk lately, and you saw the stuff I put out on the reflector about loop antennas. Loop an un unless you have just acres and acres and a lot of money and a lot of technical expertise to put out phased wire antennas and stuff like that, loop antennas are really the hot setup for AM, for AM DX even. Uh, the, the, the proof of this is that after about you know, 1940 or so, almost every radio you run into has an internal loop antenna in it because they work well, they work reasonably well inside a building, and uh, uh, they, they do the trick. Uh, you can add an external loop to an existing radio that just has antenna terminals. Uh, now it becomes a, a two-hand tuning thing. You got to bring the loop along with your, your tuning, but that's not a big deal. Uh, this only works with sensitive receivers. Uh, you might get it to work with a TRF, but then the problem is that the loop couples back into the TRF and the thing oscillates on you, which actually may be a good thing. You can get some extra sensitivity out of it if you can control the thing. I, I had a loop on my, uh, on my Atwater Kent 20C many years ago, but I, I gave up on that. Uh, it's good in a noisy environment because inside your house, there are a lot of noise sources. It gets conducted around by the, the electrical wiring, but the saving grace is that most of the noise is an electrical field. Now remember that a radio wave has an electrical component and a magnetic component. And the magnetic component will make its way into the house and the loop responds primarily to the magnetic field, so it ignores all the noise, and so it, it's a good thing. Uh, they're small, they're easy to make, and uh, there's some tricks you can do with it. And I didn't put it in here. If you don't have the energy or desire or whatever to build one of these loops, the Chinese will sell you one for 20 bucks on uh, on Amazon, you'll have it in three days. There's one of those sitting back here you can take a look at. They really work reasonably well, and uh, uh, I guess I recommend them. So, you have a loop. These are the turns around this way. If it were a ferrite loop antenna, you'd have a bar through here and the diameter would just be smaller, but it's still wound around this direction. Maximum pickup 
is off the sides of the loop in the plane of the windings. And there is a null, a sharp dip and pickup off the front of the loop, off both sides of the loop. So you can use this to your advantage. Uh, let's say, you know, here we are, freehold. I always consider the center of the, the, center of the world for NGARC is freehold for, for historic purposes. But so here you are in freehold, and here's your antenna pattern, and you tune in WSB in Atlanta, which is a reasonable DX station, but they're nice and loud, they're easy to hear. Tune up 750, then you rotate the antenna so that null is pointing at Atlanta, and you'll hear Atlanta go right on down. And on a good night, you'll hear Spanish underneath. You listen to it for a while. And now I, th I did this for years, but now I'm not sure what's happening in Venezuela. These guys might be off the air. But it's Aire Say Aire, uh, ra Radio Caracas Radio, which is a strange thing. But they actually identify, unlike the Cubans who will talk for hours without ever <laughs> identifying, you'll hear Aire Say Aire. 2,000 mile DX, bang, you got it. And uh, that was a result of using a loop antenna to do it. And uh, the reason you can hear that, those guys so well is an overwater path. So signals come up pretty well from down there if you can get rid of the 700 mile away local station. Uh, do you all know about Radio Raylo? Yes. Some of you know about Radio Raylo, but you, you tune around sometimes at night and you'll get on a station and you'll hear clock ticks over whatever it is you're listening to. One of the, one of the big ones here you can take a, a shot at. I, I can't do it because I'm too close to them up in Jersey City. But 570 WMCA, which is up there in the Meadowlands, and there's a, a Radio Raylo station on them, and especially if you take your loop and null out uh, WMCA, you can hear these guys. Okay, it's a radio network in Cuba, same program on all stations on these frequencies. And they have a normal programming. They're something in Spanish. I don't understand enough Spanish to know what it is except to hear them say Havana every once in a while and, and whatever. But on top of the audio, there's a clock tick every second and there's a beep on the minute followed by an RR in Morse code. And this is at like 100% modulation so you can hear it over the other station you're listening to. So if you, th if you think you know where one of these guys are, you just get an accurate clock, you sit listening to WMCA, you watch the clock come up to the minute, you might hear the beep, you might not, but the RR is really loud. You hear da da it, da da it, you work Cuba. That easy. Now, I think, I think I can do this for you here. Let's see what happens. Apoyan Villaclareños, causa de estudiantado latinoamericano. Organizaciones estudiantiles de Villaclara expresaron su apoyo a las protestas que se desarrollan desde hace meses en países latinoamericanos, reclamando una educación de calidad. Uh, the, the, other way, the other way, my, my, one of my other secret weapons to log Cuba, again, they have these radio networks, and there's multiple networks, one of which is Radio Rebelde, the rebellion. And they have a station you can hear pretty easily on 670. If you tune WSCR in Chicago, turn your antenna so you can't hear them, and listen to the Spanish underneath. Now, same, uh, same network, has a transmitter on 600 kilohertz. And on a good night, you can pop down to 600, pop down to 670. If you hear the same program in both places, bang, bang, you just log two Cubans. 
So that's, you know, 1,347 miles in one case and 1,271 in another, that fattens your score pretty well. That's one of the good things to do. And uh, I, even, I even did that with the, uh, with, with the Regeniformer set. They're, they're fairly strong and if conditions are decent, uh, you can do that pretty easily. Okay, uh, I'm gonna kind of brush through the contest rules. You can read them online, but the, my intentions when I set this up, and it was so long ago, I can hardly believe it, what we're going on, 19 years, is it? And back in the, back in the day, before I did this, I had participated in a crystal, a crystal set DX contest. And the thing was a week long, and you were logging every station you possibly could. And so it was a real slog to, to do this. I thought had what I thought was a good score, and I came in fourth, okay. But I decided that if we were gonna do this, we needed to keep it simple so that it wouldn't be, so it'd be approachable by just casual people who wanted to participate. So the deal is that, and it starts next Friday, and runs from noon on Friday here through two weekends to noon on Sunday down here. So you get weekend time to do this. And the way this is set up, you are doing loggings in one 24-hour session, noon to noon, so you get all of night to, to do this. And you're only counting the distance for your 10 best scores. So log everything and then scratch out things as you get better, better stations. But you can do a presentable, credible log in, you know, in two or three hours once you have an idea of where you're going and what you're doing. Uh, so that's how that works. Uh, the one rule here is you can't, you can only use one, ra one radio during a particular session. So you can't use the greatest radio in the world to bird dog your crystal set and, and then you know, tune it in and say, oh yeah, I heard it. It's the same thing. So uh, you don't bird dog. We mentioned the frequencies. Uh, the categories are such, crystal radios, primitive receivers, one and two tubes, one or, 20s battery sets, other home entertainment radios, tube home entertainment radios, and then E is uh, tube type communication receivers because they have they have something of an advantage over your over your home console in in a lot of ways. Uh, and then we added F, any radio of your choosing. So run what you brung, use your digital set or whatever. And one that Rich put me up to a while back, there's people with light rate, lightweight radios, they start it with these little $19 Sony things. And, and, and you know, they're actually pretty good radios, you can hear DX. There's one back there you can take a look at that I mounted a, a national velvet vernier dial on, uh, on the thing, and it's still under a pound, so, so it, it's, a, it's an ultralight. Antennas, anything you want. Uh, now, uh, so it's, one point per mile for your best 10 stations. Uh, and uh, one of the things that, well, in fact, it was, it was Bill who, who missed this. He says, hey, can I participate from Florida? Absolutely. If you read the, I told him, RTFM, uh, there it says in red, if the, the official distances are for people within 100 miles of a freehold, that's most of us. But if you're outside that area, we can, you can calculate your own score and we'll double check it uh, based on your location. So yeah, you're in Florida, you're in California or whatever, go ahead, do a log, see what you can hear. Uh, and we added a special award. If, if it's your first time in the contest, mark your log, first timer, and there'll be, awards for first, the best first timers. Where, was there a question? Uh, so you submit your logs to Tom Provost 
either by mail, postmarked the Monday a week after the, the contest, or you can send it to them electronically, which is probably the preferred way to do it. And uh, Alan? Yes. Um, the one, the, the uh, data that's in the broadcaster has my home at, uh, email address, which is preferred. Uh, that's my work. I can get it either way. Okay. I will. I will. I will change to your home on all the electronic stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'll get it either way. You'll get it either way. Okay. But uh, uh, we'll, we'll change to the home one if that's. If that's the call, if that's what you'd like to see. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, all right. So anyway, uh, this, this is an army thing. I think maybe it was, I, I, was, I was an enlisted guy, so they didn't share these officer things with me. But it's, it's the seven Ps. There they are. And, and so what you want to do, you want to start, start tomorrow and organize your radio and start listening, take some notes, figure out what's going on. And, uh, and then you can participate in the contest really easily. Just sit down on a contest night. and and knock out the stations. It doesn't take long. It's not a big effort, and it's a lot of fun. And that's it. Happy DX. <laughs>going out my second floor to my backyard, back, a tree on the other side of my backyard. Yeah. We're far, I'm far from power lines. Uh, I, I lost the limb that I go to. Uh -huh. the final, so, but there's a good limb on the front of the house, but that's near the road, right? You know, alongside yeah. the road. Yeah. And the power lines are there. Is that... Well, put, put, put some... Well, here's, 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 what, here's what you really want to do. Take a portable radio, loop antenna, and walk around and see where the noise is. Yep. See if it's any noisier in your front yard than it is in your backyard. Would I expect, though, to have more noise if I had to be closer to the power line? Well, sometimes, sometimes power lines aren't particularly noisy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, I'll give it a shot. You know, give it a shot. Right. Uh, you know, sometimes, it, you know, I know Tom went through a horrible thing with with noise on, uh, but usually they're reasonably quiet. I mean, I've got, you know, 440, you know, 4,000 volt line right up the back of my property, and it's, you know, it's close. It's not a big deal. I don't have a lot of trouble. Yeah. One other question? Yeah. If, if, if you, you got a really old radio, yeah. are, are you allowed to use a trap with that? Uh, use, you, use what? You get a trap on it if you want to. If you want to, antennas are free, so any sort of wave trap or, yeah. or, or okay. tuner that you want to put in front of it is okay. Right. Anything else? You can put a pre selector in front of the uh, set? Well, yeah, I, I don't think, I don't, if, if, you, if, if, if you say amplification, then no. But, but any kind of antenna tuner, yeah. Uh, what, what I had done with that one tube regen, it was something I'd used the crystal set, just a, a tank circuit, just a coil and a cap, and then a coupling loop into that in series with the antenna. And you could null a station out pretty, pretty nicely with that. And you could you know, sit down with your coil and capacitor and uh, clip leads and make one pretty quick. OK, uh, yes? I, I just have a comment. The actual extra cam exam, and that's what do you do if you're trying to locate a noise way in your house? And uh, you go through the multiple guesses, and the, the best thing to do is to take your transistor radio and walk it around inside and outside. Just don't limit yourself to inside out. I found stuff coming from my neighbor's house, and I can't even listen to 160 meters anymore. That's how bad it is. Yeah, and, and, and even with your loop antennas and things, survey your house because you're going to find out they work, uh, it works better in a window. You're better off on the south and west side of your house because that's where most of the DX is. Uh, so you do a little survey. It'll take you 20 minutes, you know, and, and just stay away from them. And sometimes you pull breakers to find out where the noise comes from in your house. That's exactly what I'm going to do. You know, but uh, so there's, you know, proper prior planning, you, you, you do some of that stuff now, and, uh, and you'll be in shape for the contest. Every single one of them all. Okay, thank you.